guest tonight is Sarah Wordsworth. When she isn't running with the Galloway training team, she's running around the country because she's an accomplished actress, writer, and singer. So this is a very special show because she will be performing later in the show two original songs. So please welcome Sarah. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Sarah, let's get started by sharing with our audience a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? A little bit about your schooling and family. Okay. Um, I was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey, so not too far from New York. Um, I was very lucky because I was born to a musician mother. And I like to say that my father is a storyteller, so I feel like my theatrical instincts came a little bit from both of them. Um, and I sort of made my way to New York City for college and never left, and that was um, many years ago. <laughs> well, before we jump to uh, New York, as a youngster, were you athletically inclined? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, I always enjoyed sports, and uh, my dad also was very, very interested in sports. I loved baseball, so I played girls softball. And, you know, as any kid does, I enjoyed running around outside and um, all of that. But as I got older, I sort of went the arts route and sort of thought I wasn't an athletically gifted person. Mm -hmm. um, so really shied away from that, especially running, which I thought I clearly had no talent for. Really? Well, what people that inspire you artistically? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, as I said, my, my mother was a huge artistic influence on me. Um, she got us started, my sister and I, into theater very, very early, uh, theater and music. And I loved Broadway. I just really loved Broadway shows. And we'd come to New York or go to Philadelphia and see musical theater. And I knew I wanted to be involved somehow. OK. In college, what was your major? I was a theater major in college. In, in New York? Where did you go? Uh, Fordham University at Lincoln Center. Oh, excellent. Right in the heart of New right York. Right here, <laughs> right down the street. OK, so what happened after college? Did you start your career as a actress, musician, writer? Um, you know, I've always sort of balanced uh, performing with a love of writing, but I didn't ever think that the two could meet. And I actually never thought about the fact that people wrote musical theater. You know, I sort of knew, oh, that's something Andrew Lloyd Webber and Stephen Sondheim are doing. I didn't ever think it was something that I could be doing. Mm -hmm. And so um, somewhere along the way, my love for performing and my love for writing kind of were able to meet in the middle. And um, in recent years, I've been able to forge a career in musical theater writing, which is really exciting. OK. Well, at some point, you discovered running, because I know you've done a couple of marathons. Yes. <laughs> so tell us a story about uh, why the running. Um, wow, why the running. It, it surprises me even now. I was sitting here as we were getting set up for the show, thinking, am I really the guest on a running show? How did that happen to me? But um, you know, writing musical theater shows often take a very long time to write while they're in development. And I'd been working on a very special musical for many years called In Transit. And um, the musical was nearing production, but it was going a lot more slowly than I'd hoped. And I just needed some sort of outlet. And I don't know what, what made me want to do it, but one day I thought, you know what, I think I'd like to do a 5K. It's something that I don't think I can do, so I really want to challenge myself. And um, I looked on the internet for a program and found uh, the ever popular couch to 5K plan. And at the time, <laughs> I thought that was really crazy. And this was only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, wow, how would I ever survive a 5K? And so I kind of started there. And with all runners, <laughs> it escalates. So Excellent. But at some point, you discovered the, the gallery training team, because we see you occasionally on Saturday when yes. you're not performing. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Galloway, finding the Galloway team was really great for me. Um, sort of about a year into my running, I was doing distances that were longer and longer, but I was very concerned about injury and how to, um, you know, what I could do for injury prevention because I had no time to get injured uh, with my schedule. And I also wanted a program that would allow me to complete longer distances with um, shorter training times. In other words, um, I literally looked for a program that would have a three day a week training schedule. Excellent. So I stumbled across the New York Galloway program, not having any idea what it was. And I'm a real joiner, so I uh, promptly joined. And then that really that really helped me complete complete my marathons. Great. So, so. you just showed up on a Saturday, and, uh, and uh, everybody I just did. took you in. I did. Well, I'm also um, a talker. So I'm, I'm one of those people that maybe you'd like to have with you on a very long run, because I'll always bring up new things to talk about. And uh, 
So they're, they're just a great warm group um, filled with people of all levels, and that's what I really needed was sort of a judgment-free zone with running. Yes, so. yes, the Galloway is judgment-free. Yeah. And talking is important because our long distance uh, running, we say, keep it conversational. Right. That's how you know how fast <laughs> to go. Right. If you can maintain a conversation. Exactly. Oh, exactly. excellent. Well, th well, sounds like you expanded beyond the 5K, which is approximately yeah. 3.1 miles. Yeah. So what was the next distance up for you? Oh gosh, um, after I did the 5K, I sort of graduated to the 10K. And then from the 10K, I said, I'd like to do a marathon. <laughs> so um, I thought, you know, why not? Why not why just not? try it? This is while you were training with Galloway? Did you decide on um, No, you know, I found Galloway once I had decided I wanted to do a marathon. I signed up for a marathon and then worried about the how. Okay. So, um, and which marathon was that? I did the Walt Disney World Marathon. Oh, in, you picked um, 2010. You picked a nice destination marathon. I did. And I thought it would be warm. Um, but the year that I ran it, it was 27 degrees at race start. Well, they start very early, like yes. like 5 o'clock in the morning, because yeah. they anticipate exactly. it being very warm. Exactly. Well, I have did it, and, uh, and we started early. By 9 o'clock, it was very hot. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had a lucky year. Mine never got warm, so. oh. but it was great. It was such a great race, and I'm a big Disney fan. So it was really great to do my first marathon there. It, it is. It's, it's yeah. not a one where you're going for a personal best because, as you said, all the Disney characters are out there oh, to yeah. greet you. It was great. I mean, I really, I didn't have a personal best at the time. You know, I had never done a marathon. So I thought I would just like to finish and finish healthy and happy. And that's what I did. Excellent. And were other Galloway people there with you? Did you have a little Um, You know, there contingent? were a lot of Galloway people that ran that year, um, and we met in a tent beforehand, which was really nice. Uh, but I did the course on my own, and uh, with no Walkman. Walkman, that's, there we go, I just showed my age. Um, no iPod on me, <laughs> and uh, no, just sort of no music. I just wanted to kind of feel the course. And of course, at Disney, there's a lot of distractions and a lot of fun happening around you. So I just did it myself. and. Uh, Lots of photographs. Yeah, a lot of photographs. Because they have a photo guy next to the character. Yes, so and you I had by. my camera with me as well. So I stopped at every mile, and uh, yeah, it was okay, great. Okay, great. So great. your first marathon under your belt, and now what? Now you wanted more bling? I want, well, yes, I thought, well, you know, here I am. I'm a New Yorker, and I thought, well, I better sign up for the New York City Marathon and do it. So um, less than a year later, with my husband by my side, I did the New York City Marathon and cut almost an hour off my time. But this time you so, weren't stopping for too many photographs. Well, yeah, that's right. There was Mickey Mouse was not distracting me on this course. Um, and also my husband was helping me along a little bit oh. motivationally. So was that his first up. marathon or he's already? It was his first. It was his first marathon. He's very athletic. Um, but he had never trained with running before, so we kind of did this together. And there Great. We were. Would he train part of the time with you? or? Um, I'd love to say he did, but he's one of those athletically gifted people that didn't have to train as much as I did. Oh. So uh, we joke that his first and only training run was 24 miles. And uh, he somehow survived the marathon, in fact, better than I did. At the end, I was really um, struggling, and he was helping me along. Oh, so. excellent. Well, that's, the, that's a great way to great do it. Great to have an athletic husband with you. <laughs> OK, an athletic spouse is uh, high on exactly. your list. And, uh, and he, but he joined with you in the, in the walking breaks, right? He did, yeah, yeah, he did. And I had sort of laid out that that was going to be my plan, and, that, and it has been my plan in every, in every race I've done since, I, since I've joined Galloway. Great, so. and you can modify it as, as the weather. Exactly. Yeah, that's a beauty, beauty exactly. of the plan. Yeah. So you, now you've done your second marathon. So have you done more since then? Um, I like to say I've retired to the half, but who knows? <laughs> never say never. Um, but I just kind of felt like I wanted to move to the half marathon distance because I felt like I could improve maybe. And um, it wasn't as much training time. Well, excellent. So, well, they yeah. say the half is twice as much fun. Yeah, it, and so I did. Um, I sort of did my first half where I was being competitive with myself. Um, this past October, I did the Atlantic City half marathon in my oh, hometown, so oh, that was kind of fun. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did you have uh, your yeah. friends support you? To, you know, um, my family was there, and I, I ran the race with a very good friend of mine who sort of got me interested in running. So oh, really originally, fun. you mean? Yeah, originally, my, my very good friend, Andy Whaley. So. Oh, OK. There's always a story yeah. like that, that There's somebody inspired always, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Exactly. And Atlantic City, wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. There are lots of half marathons. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of your future challenges, athletically speaking? 
Um, you know, I would I wouldn't mind taking on one of those mini triathlons there. I've said it out loud, so that means I guess I have to do it, but I'd really think to do that I have to get my swimming a little better and that's sort of what I fear. Um, so maybe that at some point, but I think for me the challenge right now because I haven't been running that long and I always had the excitement of a race, I think for me the challenge right now is just to keep doing it. Just Excellent. to stay on a schedule and keep loving it, like oh, I have been. Yes, so, yes. Well, I, I support the idea of a, a sprint triathlon. Yeah. There's so many in the New York area. Yeah. And some are so we'll women see. only, very mm -hmm. supportive. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. I have a lot of great friends in the Galloway group, so maybe they'll talk me into something at some point. Uh, oh, I'm sure <laughs> but, they're very persuasive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. When your defenses are down, when you're out in the long run, that's when that's when people can really get to you. So we'll see. Okay, I'm sure they'll talk <laughs> you into one. But let's go back to your artistic. Now you mentioned uh, in transit. Tell us a little yes. bit about how did that happen and come about. Um, in transit is an a cappella musical, and it came about um, sort of after college. In the few years right after college, I was kind of. Um, kicking around, going on a lot of auditions, and just working on writing projects of my own. And I was really seeking an artistic community. And I found um, an a cappella group and joined the group. And a cappella was something I'd always wanted to sing um, in college. And my college didn't have an a cappella group at the time. So Fordham didn't have one? Um, not the Lincoln Center campus. Not oh. Maybe they do now, but at the okay. time, they did not. Um, so I had never done a cappella singing myself, but really wanted to and joined this a cappella group. And I'm so blessed because that, that group turned into my best friends and my co-writers. And somewhere along the way, we um, started writing our own material and performing it. And these were songs and stories about our lives in New York City. And to make a long story very short, several years later, it turned into a full-length musical and it opened off-Broadway last year. I saw the show. Thank you so much for <laughs> alerting me. I saw it at uh, 59th East, 59th Street. I want to give that place. Yes, Primary Stages is the theater company um, that produced us there, so they're wonderful. Are you going to come back to that stage? Uh... Um, I'm not sure where we're going to be next, but hopefully, they're sort of working out the details right now. Hopefully, we'll be on the New York stage again sometime soon. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about the story so that our audience get an idea of what it's about. In transit, it's a related to the New York City subway? It is, <laughs> it is. I like to say that In Transit is about life, love, and the MTA. Uh, but it is a seven person, all a cappella musical. So for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it just means we don't have any instruments. So it's all, the sounds are produced with a human voice. Mm -hmm. um, and we have six part harmony for most of the show, plus a beatboxer, um, who's just a wonderful addition. And he plays a, um, character, a subway performer named Boxman. And so what we do, and in transit, um, these seven actors play 38 roles, and um, they show just different New Yorker stories about people that are very much trying to get somewhere in their life and in love. Um, and the obstacles that are in their way. Like I mentioned, I saw the play and I was very impressed with their endurance. <laughs> so they must do a few uh, things on running or something. That, that yeah, yeah, the, ca to... the cast was really, was really wonderful. We used to say it was kind of like doing a marathon, you know, so. Wonderful, I re highly recommend the show. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank and you. Uh, any other future projects along that, along that line of future um, Yeah, well, we're still working on some rewrites for In Transit, always doing rewrites, uh, but myself and a collaborator, Russ Kaplan, are working on a lot of new musical theater pieces. Um, we're doing an original indie rock musical that we're sort of working on right now, and we've just been commissioned to write a new um, family musical about Albert Einstein. Oh, So excellent. we're working on that, and and a lot of other little things in between, and hopefully at some point back to my acting career. Okay. But I get very distracted and very busy. So. Okay, we're going to take a break. Tell us about, you're going to sing the two original songs? I am, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the two songs. Um, I'm going to do two songs that, um, that I wrote the lyrics for. I work mostly as a lyricist and a book writer and occasional um, music composition. But um, the first song I'm going to do is called Passport, and that's sort of a standalone song, not from any show, but that was written as special material for someone. And uh, the second song is from In Transit. Oh, excellent. Well, with that, thank you so much for coming to Gotta Run. Thank you. Wish you all the great success in the world. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have been here. Okay, folks, we're going to take a break. And we're going to go and see Sarah. And, and your Russ is going to be with you. Right? Yes, indeed. Great. Russ is going to be playing. So stay tuned. 
Hi there. So I'm here with my co-writer and musical theater collaborator, Russ Kaplan. And uh, Russ and I have been working on a number of musical theater writing projects recently. And um, in addition to that, we're often asked to write special material for different concerts or benefits. And a very good and a very talented actor, a friend of mine, Doug Shapiro, asked us to write a song for him for a benefit concert he was doing. And this is what we came up with. It's called Passport. Next, we're going to do a song from the musical In Transit that Russ and I co-wrote with Kristen Anderson Lopez and James Allen Ford. It's an a cappella musical about life in New York City um, and the subway system. Um, this, in this particular song, there's a girl named Allie, and she's been sort of chasing around a lost love for a long time. And uh, we meet her toward the end of the show, and this is what she sings. I should note that In Transit is an off-Broadway a cappella musical, but today we'll be doing it with a keyboard. <laughs> Apartment, only 12 blocks from my new boyfriend in Brooklyn. 
it's time to move. One August night in Prospect Park, out of the blue, we had the brilliant thought, let's pay one rent instead of two. So I decided there and then, I'd break my lease once again, and I wondered if my parents would approve. Dad, I know giving up my own place is a huge step, but it feels so right. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. It's time to move. You're still gone. It's time to move on. 